إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه المجيد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون Oh, you who believe have taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of the condition, this is the most important thing that we live with taqwa of Allah azza wa jal. وَلْتَنْظُرْ نَفْسٌ مَا قَدَّمَتْ لِغَدْ And let every single soul look after what actions they are putting forth for tomorrow. And again, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ Have that taqwa, that precaution of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Allah is all aware of every single thing that you do. And do not be like those who forgot Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he forgot them. For verily they are the fasiqoon. They are the wretched. They are the wicked. They are the corruptors. The ones who they forget Allah. And there is no one but they that causes corruption in the land. Those who forget Allah Jalla fi ulah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, No, la yastawi. They are not equal. Ashabun nari wa ashabul jannah. The family of the fire, the people of the fire, in which that is their abode, they are not equal with the people of Jannah. Verily, those of Jannah, they are the true winners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from amongst them. In talking about our homeland, Philistine, we first and we only complain to Allah Jalla fi ulah. So we call out to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and we plead our case to him and we complain to Allah the way that the prophets alayhim salam they used to do for verily we are facing a difficult issue and that is that we are commanded in Islam to celebrate Eid to be happy during Eid to make it a day of festival yet we are contradicted with these emotions. We are contradicted. How could I possibly be happy? How can I possibly smile when my brothers and my sisters in my hometown, in my village are being killed and being kicked out and being dragged on the floor before our eyes? How could we stand up for this? How could we ignore this? How could we turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to this? Tell me. So we want peace. And we strive for peace. Yet these things, we need to put our foot down when they happen. We must stand for justice. We must be brave and we must be strong for it. I stand with a broken heart at the wretched and the wicked actions of those Zionists in Israel and what they are doing in our masjid, in the masjid of the Muslimin, the masjid that Allah gave us, the creator of the heavens and the earth, he gave it to the Muslimin. And they're in there causing corruption. They're in there killing. And earlier this week, in not only the greatest month, in not only the greatest week, not only the greatest nights, but the greatest hours of the year, the one that Allah says 
is greater than a thousand months. The one in which we strive for, the one in which we literally do not sleep during, and we stay up. We were caught by surprise. We were taken off guards by the cowards who took advantage of us while we were in our state of worship. And they came, and they came in the masjid unannounced, and they began opening fire and throwing the tear gas bombs and dragging the women by their garments on the streets and killing the children. For what? What is their justification for this? What is your justification for this? How could you explain this? So the Israelis, they began opening fire, taking over the masjid, closing it down by force, beating up men mercilessly, so much so that you do not know the front of the face from the back of the face because it is covered in blood. Mercilessly, inhumanely, I swear to you by Allah, this is not an Arab issue. This is not an Islamic issue. This is a humanitarian issue. If you as a human do not find an issue with this, then you have a sickness in your heart. You have a sickness in your heart. If you're okay with this, if you're fine living your life while these kinds of actions are taking place, really these are the worst of people. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِيهِ أَنْ يُذْكَرَ فِيهَ اسْمُهُ وَسَعَى فِي خَرَابِهَا Who is worse than the one who eliminates the worship and remembrance of Allah in his masajid, in his places of worship, and they strive for its corruption. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, أُولَٰئِكَ مَا كَانَ لَهُمْ أَنْ يَدْخُلُوهَا إِلَّا خَائِفِينَ They will never enter it. They will never enter the masajid of Allah except while they are in a state of fear. لَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزْيٌ They will have a humiliation in this life. This is a guarantee from Allah. And Allah does not break His promise. They will have a humiliation in this life. لَهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا خِزْيٌ وَلَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ and they have a great punishment. They have a punishment that is عظيم يوم القيامة. So this is what caused the retaliation. This is what caused the protests of the people of Palestine, of those people in Gaza. And I ask you sincerely, if this happened in your home country, what would they do? If this happened in your home, what would you do? If we had citizens building walls 20, 30, 40 feet high, what would happen to those people? And I'll leave that for you to answer, sincerely. Take the anger that is in your chest, just imagining the scenario of your mother being ripped out of her home physically and what your reaction would be. And know that Islam is more merciful than you, that Islam is more peaceful than what you have in your heart and what any other ideology preaches. For in Islam, it was narrated by Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma that a woman was found killed during one of the battles. So when the Messenger alayhi salawatu wasalam found out about this, فَنَهَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَنْ قَتْلِ النِّسَاءِ وَالصُّبْيَانِ The Messenger alayhi salawatu wasalam, this hadith sahih in Muslim, he prohibited, it is haram, to kill women and children, as well as those innocent civilians who have nothing to do with the issue at hand, who aren't interested in your conflict, who just want to live with peace, who want to go to school, who want to eat their food, who want to be comfortable in a home, who want to spend time with their family. It is haram, prohibited, impermissible in Islam, regardless of the situation, even in a state of war, even in a state of war, to kill women and children, and in some narrations, even to cut down the trees. Even the animals, we don't harm them in a state of war. And the people of Gaza, they know this. The people of Gaza, they understand this. So when they struck those missiles, they aimed at the military base. And not a single, not one child was reported dead in the Israeli side. Could they claim the same? Could they claim the same? That not a single Muslim was dead. That not a single child was dead. 
In fact, you can count them in the hundreds, in the thousands over the years of the innocent children that they killed. And I want to make it crystal clear that this is not a war. This is not a battle. This is someone oppressing a land. You have an oppressor and an oppressed. You have an army, the Israeli army, the 20th strongest army on the face of the earth. Wow, the Palestinian army, not only are they not found in the top 140, but they're not found in the list at all. Some do not even classify them as an army. They do not have the manpower, the numbers, the money, the resources to be considered as an army. In Islam, we also fight with something that some might consider a disadvantage. And that is that we don't kill children. We don't kill women. We don't bombard nations and places of worship. We don't hurt the civilians and the innocents. While they do, they have no morals. They have no rules. They do as they please. So you would think that they have the advantage over us. They don't. I swear by the Lord that they do not have the advantage. If we were to remain steadfast, regardless of the number, regardless of the rules we have to abide by, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He would make us victorious. And to show you the mercy of Islam, I'll bring you the verses that they quote, that the news quote, that the media quote, and we'll understand the ayah. We don't hide anything in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And kill and fight in the sake of Allah, for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ Only those who they fight you, only those who are killing you. And on top of that, even when they're killing you, even when they're raping your woman and killing your children, Allah said, وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Do not transgress, even against those people. Do not transgress. We don't mutilate bodies. We don't do things out of the ordinary. For verily Allah does not love, meaning He hates the Mu'tadeen. And the Mu'tadeen here is in reference to those who are being oppressed, those who are being killed, those who are being kicked out of their homes. You still cannot transgress, for Allah does not love that. And He said, وَقُتُلُوهُمْ حَيْثُ ثَقِفْتُمُوهُمْ وَأَخْرِجُوهُمْ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَخْرَجُوكُمْ Kill them where you find them, and take them out of the place where they took you out of. Take them out of those homes that they took you out of. You call this terrorism. Someone comes to your home and takes you out for you to go and take it back. Is that terrorism? Let me come and take your home. Let me come and take your car and ask to take it back. I'll call you a terrorist. I'll see what your reaction is. And to show you the mercy of Islam, the mercy of Allah, the peace and justice that comes with Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَإِن جَنَحُوا لِسَّلْمِ فَجَنَحْ لَهَا And if they call you towards peace, then go towards peace. Regardless of what they've done. If they reach their hand forward for peace, then take that, uh, take that offer. But there are no offers of peace. You cannot claim peace when you're killing women and children. You cannot claim peace with the apartheid that's going on. When you separate mother and father from son and daughter. You cannot claim peace. And to make it even clearer, we are not talking about the Jews. We are not talking about the religion of Judaism. For I believe that every religion, even the ones that are corrupt today, the ones that have changed today, are still based on a foundation of mercy, on a foundation of justice, on a foundation of equal treating to regardless of who the person is in front of you. These are not Jews, these are Zionists. Those who think, those who claim that the, the land of Philistine belongs to them. Why? What is their logic? What is their reasoning? That 2,000 years ago, God gave it to them. With no evidence of this, with no authentic reports of this, they claim that God gave it to them 2,000 years ago. We have the authentic report. We know what took place. We know what they said word for word when Allah told them, enter Jerusalem. 
enter, enter Al-Aqsa, go into the masjid if you dare. Allah commanded them to enter it and to take it over for there were tyrants in there. And if you enter it, you will surely be victorious. And they were guaranteed victory. All they had to do was enter the doors of Al-Aqsa. And their response to Musa alayhi salam, they said, قَالُوا يَا مُوسَى إِنَّا لَنَّ نَدْخُلَهَا أَبَدًا مَا دَامُوا فِيهَا فَاذْهَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّا هَا هُنَا قَاعِدُونَ They said, oh Musa, listen to us Musa, because we told you before we're not going to enter it. Listen Musa, we tell you again, we will not enter it أَبَدًا ever. We will never enter it until they exit from it because we're cowards, because we can't fight. Unless we have millions against thousands, we don't fight. Unless I'm fighting a child in a beach, I don't fight. Unless it's a woman, I don't fight. This is the coward behavior of those Zionists and those Israelis. So they said, oh Musa, we will not enter it until they leave it. So leave, go away, idhab, anta wa rabbuk, you and your Lord, and go fight. Go fight, O Musa, with your Lord. We are going to remain here sitting. These are those who had the opportunity to enter those lands, who gave up that opportunity. What right do they have to it now? And the Quran is the most authentic book on the face of the earth, proven by Muslims and non-Muslims, scientifically, mathematically. If this is what Allah said that they said, then quote it. This is what they said. Wallahi, this is what they said. And as for the media propagandas, as to what you hear about Palestine, about what you hear about Muslims, I truly trust that our educated citizens of the United States of America are too smart, are not that gullible to believe what they hear, to believe what they see. It is very easy to see through those lines. And I know and I am confident that there is no way that the Americans would stoop to such a level as to gullibly believe what they find in the media, what they find in the news. I'm certain of that. For our American citizens, they see us. They see us in the schools and in the hospitals. And the one taking care of them in the hospitals, those doctors are Muslim. For the largest, the largest makeup of doctors per capita is by Muslims. The engineers are in majority Muslims, look it up. I stand here today. I'm a civil engineer of the city of Philadelphia. Everyone here is educated. Every one of us here has a role to play in making the United States of America a better place. This is what we do with freedom. This is what we do with justice. Muslims make the land that they live in better. Muslims are those, Muslims alone are those who ended slavery. Muslims are those who ended poverty and who continue to strive against poverty and injustice in the land regardless of wherever that is. These are the Muslims. This is what they do when they have the freedom. And in our speech today, we are not directing it towards those Zionists, those Israelis. We have no interest in speaking to them. We have absolutely nothing to say to them. Rather, I speak to you. For those Zionists, they prove their moral code. They prove their logic to me when they murdered those children on the beach playing. What is there to say to a person like that? To people like that? Rather, I speak to you. Oh, Americans, I speak to you in informing you about this injustice, in teaching you about what is going on in Palestine so you could make a change, so you could raise this awareness, so you could stop at least, at least. We don't want your help. We don't want your support, at least. Stop supporting the others. Stop supporting the Israeli government, the Israeli army. Do you know that your tax dollars that take, take from your pocket, 40% of your paycheck going to taxes, the US gives approximately $4 billion to the Israeli military. What does that have to do with you? Why are you paying that? $4 billion to the Israeli military, to those Zionists. For what? So they can kick us out of our homes. So you are participating in this injustice. You are a part of it. It is your hard earned money that is going to kill us, that is killing our brothers and sisters in Palestine. 
four billion dollars. That is 17 million dollars per person. Per person. And yet America, what do they do to the poor that are living on the streets, that have been evicted from their homes because they can't afford rents, especially during this time of COVID? They give them $600. America stands alone as the only Western country, the only Western country that does not have free health care, that does not offer free education. Why? They claim they can't afford it. They're too busy giving $5 billion yearly to the Israeli military. They're too busy. They're too occupied with that. So I ask you to be well knowledge of the situation, to spread awareness of the situation, to stop being ignorant, stop turning a blind eye, and stop ignoring the situation. That goes for every single person, and myself included. Our Muslims, we're the ones that matter. Our dua, our supplication is the one that matters. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem And there are those that ask since Allah is the most powerful, the most wise Why does he allow this to happen? Having the ability to end this Well Allah Jalla fi ula he taught us in Surah Ali Imran E yam saskum qarhun faqad amassa al-qawma qarhun mithlu If any harm or calamity or wounds befall you Know that those same wounds were afflicted upon them as well. And this is how we alternate the days between the people. We alternate the victory between the people. And it has happened throughout the history of Palestine, the history of any nation. You see the victory turning from hand to hand. And why is it that Allah does that? Why is that the sunnah, the way of Allah? He said, so he can know, so Allah can know who truly believes, who's going to prove their belief, who's going to remain steadfast in these difficult times, who is going to do that. And on top of that, so he can take from you shuhada, martyrs, the highest status that a person could reach, the highest level in Jannah, the greatest reward for the martyr out of the mercy and the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why he allows these things to take place. And as for the solution of this, because Allah Jalla fi ula gave us free will. We're not puppets where he controls us and where he intervenes. He gave us free will. We do what we want with that free will. Allah allowed us to make the choice of decision and the decision is in your hands. Palestine is the way it is because of you sitting here, because of me speaking here, because of our sins because of our actions and because of the actions that we don't take and the words that we don't say. This is why the condition in Palestine is the way it is. For Allah, He gave us a wa'd. And I swear to you, Allah does not break His oaths. Allah, He said, Allah has promised those who believe and do righteous good deeds that he will give you victory in the land. He will give you, O oh Palestine, victory in the land if you worship him, if you obey him, if you don't disobey him, if you do the commands and stay away from the prohibitions. O oh Muslims, O oh Palestinians, listen to Allah. Obey his command, worship him. Allah promised you that you will be victorious in the land. Not a regular victory. You can't misinterpret this in terms of the Akhirah. On the earth, on the land, He will give you that victory. Worship Allah, obey Allah, do not transgress against Allah. Every one of our sins affects a Muslim. Every one of our sins affects the Ummah. You have a role to play. You have a role to play. Every haram action that you do has a consequence to it in this life and in the next life. And we ask Allah to forgive us of our sins. And we must bear patience, O oh Muslims, as we are here in America with nothing to do but to make dua and to bear patience. Bear that patience. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا Say that nothing befalls us except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed to befall us. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And upon Allah, the true believers, is whom? Allah, the ones that they place their trust in. And then he said, 
قُلْ هَلْ تَرَبَّصُونَ بِنَا إِلَّا إِحْدَ الْحُسْنَيَيْنِ Do they wait for us? Are they waiting patiently for Al-Husnayn to befall us? The two of best things, either they kill us and we die as martyrs and enter the highest level of that eternal abode, or we kill them at our hands. Do they wait for Al-Husnayn to befall us? وَنَحْنُ نَتَرَبَّصُ بِكُمْ And we are also waiting. We are also patiently waiting. أَنْ يُصِيبَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِعَذَابٍ مِنْ عِنْدِهِ أَوْ بِأَيْدِينَ And that we also wait for Allah to send you a punishment from with Him or from our hands. Regardless of the situation, the true believer is victorious in this life and the next life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, أَمْ حَسِبَتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ Did you think, did you think that you would enter Jannah that eternal abode, that which contains the likes of which are not found in this dunya, in this world, the likes of which have never crossed your mind, a beauty that is unimaginable, a taste and a delight that you couldn't comprehend. Did you think you would earn that? أَمْ حَسِبَتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ When that which befell those who came before you does not befall you, did you think you would be free of trial? When the best of men, the prophets, they were tried and they were tested. Did you think you would not go through the same harm? So Allah, He said, وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولُ And they were tested and trialed so much. وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى Until they said, الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا معه. The prophets and those who believed with Him. They said, مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ Where is the help of Allah? They grew impatient. Where is the help of Allah? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He responded, أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ أَلَا إِنَّ النَّصْرَ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Verily, certainly without a doubt, the nasr, the support, the success, the victory of Allah, then it is extremely, extremely near. O oh Muslims, O oh Palestinians, understand, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He quoted a people in the Qur'an who understood who He was. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ يَظُنُّونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُ اللَّهِ Those who were certain of their return to Allah, they said, and these people always have the best of speech, and these people always understand the situation, the best. Those people, they said, كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةً كَثِيرَةً بِهِذِ اللَّهِ How many times in the past, won't you learn? How many times in the past, did Allah make a small group victorious over a big group? The numbers don't mean anything. The support of the entire world means nothing. Absolutely worthless. The help of a fly would help you the same as the help of humanity in its entirety. We need the help of Allah. They said, How many times in the past did Allah make the small group victorious over the big group? 300 versus 1,000. 1,000 versus 10,000, hundreds of thousands. How many times? When will you learn to put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he quoted their dua. And we say the same dua. وَلَمَّا بَرَزُوا لِجَالُوتَ وَجُنُودِهِ قَالُوا رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبَرًا O oh Allah, grant us patience. رَبَّنَا أَفْرِغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبَرًا وَثَبِّتْ أَقُدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ And make our feet steadfast. Do not make us cowardly. Do not make us run away from the physical trial as well as the emotional trial, as well as the stance we have to play here in America of not being silent, of not being lazy, and taking every precaution that we could possibly take. Those people, they said this dua, رَبَّنَا أَفْرُغْ عَلَيْنَا صَبَرًا وَثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَنَا وَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ And make us victorious over those disbelieving people. And Allah, He said, يَنْصُرْكُمُ الله. If Allah helps you, فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ There is no one to cause you any harm. There is no one who could possibly defeat you. The entire dunya could come together and try to harm you. If you stand alone with Allah's help, then they could not harm you. As happened to Ibrahim alayhi salam, the entire world was against him. They threw him into a fire and it did not harm him. When you have the help of Allah, nothing and no one else matters. So we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that help. And he continued to say, وَإِن يَخْذُلْكُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ 
And if Allah abandons you, if Allah abandons you, then who is there that can help you after it? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, to give you the hadith, so you can be patient, so you can await the day. He said in the hadith that is sahih in Bukhari, those Jews will fight you and they will be given victory and you will be given victory over them so much so that the stone will say, there's a Jew behind me, come and kill him. Sahih hadith in Al-Bukhari. Wallahi, the day will come where this happens. But in another narration that is Sahih in Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the day of judgment does not begin before this happens. Be certain that you are ready for what comes next. Be certain that you are ready for that standing before Allah. We talk about my rights. We talk about your rights. We're devastated when the rights of people are taken. Let's we'll focus on that right that is more important than any right. The right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That He be worshipped when He created you alone. When you will stand before Him and you will answer for every single action and deed that you did. Regardless of the situation that you were put in. You do not have an excuse to not pray, to not supplicate to Him, to not fast, to not place your trust in Him. We must, we must put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rights first. So ya Palestine, oh my brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Palestine, Know that there is no power, that there is no strength, except that it is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah Jalla fi ula for His victory. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us strength, both in our worldly affairs as well as our religious affairs. We ask Allah to grant us peace and tranquility in every space on the face of the earth, in every oppressed land, Muslim and non-Muslim. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to uplift this burden from amongst us. And we ask Allah to make us from the people of paradise and to save us from the fire. We ask Allah to unite us, to unite the Muslim ummah, to unite every Muslim on the face of the earth on one deen, on one religion, to follow and to truly worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah jalla fi ula to free Palestine. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم قوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله